Hi, welcome in our lounge. I'm Denise Team, Intergeo Communication, and I have a special guest. And he is really physical with me here, face to face. I'm happy to say hello to Frank Salzgeber from ESA. Hello. <laughs> hello, thank you very much for being here. I'm happy that you are really here. So you really traveled to us from yeah, where? Non-digital, really. Yeah. I took the road, I took the car. Are you a screen? No. Yeah, no, 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 no. that's all fine. But uh, you have such wonderful Cannot place. Cannot switch you off. Yeah, no, <laughs> and uh, I think it's only the drinks which are missing here because otherwise I would stay for the rest of the Congress. Yeah, but what do you think of our lounge here? Amazing, amazing. So the bar maybe, but I think we work on that after the show. Yeah. Uh, after work. After the work. bar and the drinks after work. So we do the interview first. Perfect. So I will introduce Frank Salzgeber right now. He is head of Innovation and Ventures office at ESA. And Frank is responsible for technology transfer to industry. He's overseeing the largest space entrepreneurship network in the world. That's ESA. I mean, his team has initiated over 360 industry transfers, maybe even more. I don't know. We will talk about that mm -hmm. and supported nearly 1000 startups. He supports the exploitation of the ESA patent portfolio and promotes the ESA business applications offer, which have supported additional over 600 business cases. You see, we talk about business cases, startups, and the European Space Agency. And this is with Frank Salzgeber. So, talking about space, talking about satellites. So this summer, when I looked up at the sky, I saw lots of satellites there. So what do you think? Um, why do we need them? And aren't they enough now? Uh, when we're looking for space debris, of course, they're enough. However, everybody uses satellites without knowing. And Integeo is one of the events which we're joining and supporting with our partners for, I think, a, nearly a decade already. Uh, we know weather forecast, everybody knows that. And Integeo is about navigation, but navigation more than just a point on the map on your iPhone, on your Android map. But uh, navigation gives also the time signal for our electrical grid. We would maybe have not light here if that would be not tacted by the time signal or connecting the cell phone cells. But nowadays, with the satellites which we're bringing up or we're supporting, because ESA has really no own satellites, so we're supporting the building of the satellites, we speak about Earth observation. And the dish on your roof, that's old technology. That's 25, 30 years old. The future might be even looking different, which means internet from the sky. So. Your job is to foster the use of space services and technology for the normal industrial use. Um, but how do you do that? Yeah, and uh, this sounds much, uh, much easier than it is because uh, space in the last decades were, uh, it's like the Adams family, you know, we are pretty cool, have a lot of tricks, but uh, we have our limitations. And um, and we, we were freaks for some other people. It may be the wrong word, but uh, it was a close group. And with the tools which we are developing recently, using these assets for monitoring the Earth, understanding our planet, connectivity everywhere in the world, this is something where we open it. This is the reason why we support startups, uh, why our, our business incubation centers, they come with crazy ideas and we're looking to the team, the team, the team, the business case, the business model, and then the technology. Or we have SMEs and other companies, they have a problem in real estate, in agriculture, and this is the subject you're discussing also here in Integeo. We say, oh, that's unique. Can we help increase their likelihood of success? And then we support them with funding, uh, which, and we don't take an equity. I always say we are the nice uncle or aunt with the right address book and a little bit money in the pocket. So you just mentioned the startups and their crazy ideas. Um, Tell us about them. What were these crazy ideas? Do you have some in your package which you can get? Uh, let us to know what they uh, are doing. I, I would take three of them, at the, or okay. four of them, which are clear, uh, close in the neighborhood. One is using navigation, connection, sitting in Munich. Mm -hmm. And I think there are 100 people. And 80% of all NBA teams in the US are using the device for mm -hmm. tracking their sport people. But it's also used by BMW now. Is Aerospace building a 22 meter launcher with 100 people in Munich. Lilium Aviation, we had the proud to support the team when they were just four boys making a dreaming to make competition to Airbus. Now they're 500. 
or Yuk, which is the head of ClearSpace, which just signed this month a 150 million contract with ESA to bring satellites back from orbit down to Earth to reduce the space debris. So I think the message is there. They have to win, but now it's really the decade of space. Mm -hmm. What do startup, startups have to bring with them to um, really overwhelm you with their ideas? Or when do you say, well, okay, we support them, we bring them over the next level. What do you need from them? First, I think you have to be a little bit, I would describe it as being stubborn. You're not to stop when the people say it does not work. My previous director general once said to me, I'm a mechanical engineer. And I'll try to make it now with his friend, uh, French accent. And he said, as a mechanical engineer, you learn when you do something new that you have friction. And if you have no friction, you do something wrong. So we're looking for people which are looking for friction. Because if somebody says that's impossible or I could not do that because of, then you're on the right track. So we need really the people who have also the long-term breath to implement difficult things. Software is OK, but hardware is hard. It takes time. And trust me, space is even harder. Mm -hmm. So how do you experience the crea creativity and the competence of this young generation? When we're looking to the portfolio which we have, about nearly 1,000 companies uh, and about 600 business cases, our feeling is a little bit that uh, none of them really have a technology pr problem because they come from great universities. Uh, I think Karlsruhe is known for KET, which is also an amazing institute. So. The technology is often not the problem, and the survival rate after five years is still over 86% at the moment, which tells for me that we don't take enough risk. We have to help them also in the business case, because long term you have to make money, or when you are a social enterprise, the business case could be something else. It's maybe not money, but you have to fund your activity. And this is, I think, the, the problem often our cases have. And, uh, and it's not the first one or two million venture funding. That, that goes pretty smooth. So it's really to see where is the niche, where is the possibility, where to place my idea in the green field. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome back to Interview Expo Lounge Live. Right now here with me a special guest from ESA Space Solutions, Frank Salzgeber, Head of Innovation and Ventures Office of ESA. Hello, Frank. We are back again. <laughs> So we were talking about you and your team and that you initiated over 360 industry transfers, but also supported nearly 1,000 startups. And I wanted to know which one of them is his favorite. Which is a difficult one. And I have to add, it's not me. It's really the network and our partners have really supported the companies. And, uh, and it's hard to choose, but uh, uh, after some discussions uh, in my brain with uh, the left and the right side, uh, there's one which called Wombat, which is a gentleman we have supported, I think, 12, 13 years ago. And the initial idea was that he was getting the information of the huge trucks in open copper mines, yeah, these caterpillars which takes uh, several tons of stone and, and to get the live data and the position. So connecting to Intergeo and transmit that to the headquarters. But they realized that, they, that the big trucks are not a problem, it's the driver which is the problem. And uh, they're, they're working on a harsh environment, uh, day and night, and, uh, and sadly also accidents happen from time to time, and also, even more sad, people dying in accidents with these, uh, with, uh, as a driver. So they decided to have a, a system which takes the vital data of the driver and the geoposition of the truck, and if this is unstable, the driver will be replaced by a colleague. So everybody was be happy because uh, the family was happy, the driver of course himself, and also the copper mine company because when you have an accident, you close the mine for two days. And uh, why I like this company so much that they have spread across the world and now coming back and we kept contact after 12 years over the years. And now they have uh, a new device which takes the sound of your voice and out of that sound, they can tell you what is your stress level, you know? And that is for planes, for truck drivers, for lorry drivers, super interesting. Wow. And it's one of the most innovative companies in the mining industry. And what I like that you keep contacts. It's like your aunts, niece, kids, you know? As a parent, when you have done everything right, you get your Hanukkah, Christmas, Ramadan card, you get your phone on your birthday, that you know that in the support, 
something was really good. Otherwise, they would not stay in contact. And this is the reason why I love this case so much. And we have more, of course, to keep in contact. But I think after 13 years still working and having new ideas, then you come really to a, a, a cycle and, and you become really good in things what you do because then you start to have impact. Wow, this is a really good story. And 13 years is a really long um, connection between the yes. two of us, to two of you. Yeah. Yes, there's no quick business. Yeah, perfect. Um, let's have a look at Earth observation. Look at the ESA, the ESA Copernicus and Sentinels and they he helped to keep track of the status quo in land use and environmental destruction or what is going on with them? So first, we, it's not our satellites, it's the satellites we have the honor to build for the European Commission. And we just had ye yesterday a webinar with Mr. Aschbach, which is the director of Earth Observation, the biggest directorate, by the way, what we have. And I think Europe is unique with the data we offer. And we offer more and more data for free. Uh, combined with uh, co uh, supporting missions. And uh, Josef said it's about 350 terabyte a day, which we get and then redistribute and even duplicate. And the good thing is, uh, this is in all industries. And it's in real estate where we have companies, it's everywhere, and it gives visibility because you cannot cheat from space. And it's not the visible light, it's also the invisible light. And that the trend, what we see, it's not that we build one application for one customer and the companies uh, you, you just named in the brief before, they're working on that. They're working on the end-to-end. -end. You know, if you have a problem, you don't have to buy your own satellite, you just get it out of a platform. And I think that is the big, big change. So it's really the time of Earth observation at the moment. When we look at um, topics that are all relevant to us, like um, climate change, mass urbanization, the population, the pol pollution, and um, well, how can the developments from ESA help to solve the reality um, pressing problems like these? Of course, uh, looking with my previous head of technology transfer, which uh, uh, was dying more in the past, ESA or Spaceworks, not like the car industry in kilowatt, we look in the milliwatt. So we are really good making out of the last thing something. Our stuff has to be light. That I think is from the technology side. When we're looking from the satellite side, I always have the example, if you go to your family doctor or your doctor because you have a certain pain, he will measure you. You know, what is the temperature, uh, what is the blood pressure, and first getting data. Because out of the data, he can do the prescription. What is wrong with you and what is the cause? Yeah? And this is the reason why we need data from satellite. If somebody says there is no deforestation in Brazil, then we can show it's wrong. Mm. If somebody says there is no traffic jam or illegal fishing, then we can say it's wrong. If somebody says deep water horizon has no oil spill, then we can say it's wrong. So first, it gives visibility to everybody, and that's a powerful tool. If it gives visibility, we can move the next ways and start to work on it and change and influence. First, we have the visibility to react. So space is just a camera on a very high stative, looking down to Earth and giving us the big pictures. And, and normally I use in my presentation the picture from our astronaut colleagues, and you see Earth with the river of Nile and Sinai, and you see the little blue on the 100 kilometers, which is our atmosphere, and then the deep dark. And you see how vulnerable Earth is. Mm -hmm. And from an area where normally you have wars and fights. And I think this is what we have to learn also from our astronaut and from space, seeing the big picture that we have to solve it because we're sitting all in the ba same spaceship called Earth. Mm -hmm. I was lucky because three years ago I was at the launch of the Sentinel 2B. It was um, there was uh, uh, journalists were invited to join um, how uh, the Sentinel 2B was launched, and I had an interview with Thomas Reiter there, and he great guy. Yeah, it's, he's a great guy, and he used nearly the same words you used, and he opened my eyes because he transmitted all these. Um, pictures he saw from the planet, our blue planet, how vulnerable it is and 
how we change the way the way we live, how it gets it gets um, more brown and dirty. And um, he says, you see it clearly, but um, nothing changes on Earth. And he also said, it's so hard when you see it clear, and you see the data, and you see the facts, and you have the picture, but to transmit it into political decisions and also in the mind of the people, that is, it's. Do, it's do, so, such a long time period until this changes. Um, I think it was Mr. Kant who said uh, um, uh, the German word is Vernunft is wirklich, so uh, the sense is real. So I think we should hope in mankind that <coughs> sorry, that we there is a point where we overcome that mm. and where we understand that. And the best way is to show a picture, not just words. So, um, yeah, just drink something and I will ask you one last question here in our Expo Lounge for now. So, um, yeah, when we're looking at those challenges we just mentioned um, and also the challenges in the digital economy, um, how much will space influence it and where are the challenges? Where do you see them from your point of view? I said it before, it's the decade of space. Mm -hmm. and Space has become the backbone of our digital society. If we switch off the satellites, we would be all in trouble. And the challenge is, is that maybe we're missing the big picture. And, and Germany is a good example. We're working on, uh, on Jaya X, I think is this data platform. But on the other side, you have companies like Amazon Ground Stations, which get this mass of data in their cloud already. On the other side, you have companies like Hyper, uh, um, Starlink from SpaceX, connecting the last billions of people that we have everywhere in the world, an internet connection for movable things. On the other side, we have uh, companies like the Deutsche Telekom, we're saying we have 5G. But when you're looking of the, of the Earth again, what will be the 4G coverage at the moment? 5%, 6%, 5G will cover maybe 4%, 3%. And my answer is, what is with the rest of these 96%? Is there nobody moving, walking, flying, shipping? So, and therefore I think we have to think a little bit more holistic, uh, a little bit more, what is the solution for everything? Because otherwise in Europe or in Germany, we will lose it. Mm. Uh, at least the connection to, to the new trend of technology. Because connectivity, it's not only the dish on, on, on the roof we will have. I don't know, it's with your kids, my kids. They don't watch TV, they watch YouTube and Netflix. Mm -hmm. So it's about internet yeah. everywhere. And the, the problem when they have, when we go on vacation, how good is the Wi-Fi? So therefore, I think we have to be a little bit more realistic. And, and digitalization, we just started. And, and, and the good example is the Corona crisis. Look to all the restaurants, filling out paper forms. That is, that is technology of the last thousand years. Yeah. So I think this we have to overcome and we have to be a little bit more giving more power to crazy ideas that we say, because we have them here. You have that with the companies in, in your organization and people watching uh, of this. Let's, let's implement it and implement the future. Yeah, I have one very last question. You just mentioned it. We have about 230 exhibitors, companies, even startups or long-term exhibitors from Intergeo who went this way with Intergeo to start in that digital exhibition because usually they were learned to stay in a booth, to have their square meters, to present their um, uh, exhibitions. And um, what do you think, um, how, where will it go into the future? Will we stay digital? Will we be hybrid? Will there be exhibitions? Um, what do you think? How will we meet or exchange or, or do business in the next or in the near future? I, I think uh, indeed, change is the salt in the soup called destiny. So uh, change is good because uh, in, in evolution, there are only two passes. Involve or die out. Yeah, this is evolution and you cannot cheat evolution. We try it in governments uh, with stolen subvention and other things, but you, you have to change. It's part of life. So for personally, uh, I think it will be hybrid and it will bring new challenges. Yeah? It will bring new opportunities. So, and we have to adapt that. Or like my grandma and a lot of other people said, learning making out of lemon, lemonade. So take the best out of it, use it as a chance. and younger companies or in the mind younger companies or startups they adapt much quicker than huge organizations mm -hmm. so 
that forces the youth organizations to work more with the startups and giving them a helping hand. So I would say it ha is a big chance and uh, we just have to take it. Yeah, this is what our company also said. When we were forced to um, cancel Intergeo and say, no, we cannot meet because of the corona pandemic. It's not possible, travel restrictions. It's uh, not safe enough um, to meet 100 or thousands of people in one exhibition hall. Um, so our boss said, right now we are a startup. You should think as a startup, act as a startup and just be like a startup. And this really helped us because within nearly three months, we developed this platform where now thousands of visitors meet hundreds of exhibitors and we have several stages and uh, the conference and everything is happening right now while we are talking. And you do it very well. Or like this Chinese saying, a diamond is a piece of coal which has become something valuable under pressure. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was Frank Salzgeber from ESA Space Solutions. Frank, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us at the Intergeo Expo Launch 2020. Thank you.